all for your participation today and for your patience um, hearing all of us out. And I guess I'm the cleanup crew. So my name is Sean Slevin, and I am the founder and executive director of Swim Strong Foundation. We're 17 years young as a not-for-profit, and our mission is to reduce unintended drowning and water-based accidents. And as you might guess, part of that is being in the pool and actually delivering swim lessons. And we've done that for over 10,500 people to date. We've given over a million dollars in free swim lessons to date and um, about 225 plus of our students have graduated out of lifeguard training and primarily work for the parks department. And uh, we, of course, are looking to increase that. We have another 59 young men and women who have joined the military, uh, the Coast Guard and the Navy uh, based on swimming skills they've been able to get with us. And we work with veterans, adaptive swim programs, really age three through seniors. So our uh, focus is getting as many people in the pool as possible. We also have an educational component. Sandy really made a difference to me. It kind of hit me when uh, Superstorm Sandy hit that we weren't doing enough with just swim lessons. We really had to help people understand situational knowledge of water because as climate is changing around us, we are having more and more water brought to us. The reality is no longer can we avoid water. So we need both the swimming skills and we need the knowledge of water much more broadly than simply uh, recreational. So I wanna talk a little bit about SwimStrong's understanding of what an aquatics culture might look like. It is the knowledge of and the skills in the water which sustains our lives. And this water knowledge includes managing risk associated with water, particularly as climate change is bringing much more water into our lives and that we can no longer avoid it. It also encompasses safe drinking water, the management of wastewater, the vibrant health of our bodies of water to sustain marine life and safe transport through the water. All of this falls under what is now known as the blue economy. And there's gonna be lots of job opportunities in this space and time in the years to come. And then of course, on a personal level for all of us, the skills to enjoy the health recreational and occupational benefits of water. So I like to think of um, an aquatics culture as being one from cradle to grave. And sadly, in the cohort of children uh, five and younger, in the United States, we lose 400 children a year to drowning. It's the leading cause of death for toddlers here in the United States. And most of those kids are dying in their own homes. What can we do about this? If we can partner with health institutions, and one of the bills that actually, um, I believe Stacey Pfeffermato has put forward, will bring um, a requirement from the health department to create a film that newborn uh, parents of newborns will have to see before they take their children out of the you know home from the hospital. But we can supplement that with materials that can go into the go kits uh, from for newborn parents, but also any place else that a child and a family would intersect with healthcare, whether that's be that's the pediatric office, whether that's um, the trauma center whether that's the, an emergency room, whatever that is, but to get information out to parents so they can start looking at their homes and assessing it for water risk, very much the same way they do for electrical risk, right? Nobody wants the little one putting their finger in the socket and getting electrocuted, right? Well, we don't want them drowning either at home, right? So I think we can do some, some good work there. And there are programs. I don't know anybody that might be here that works with very young children, but there are programs avail available, acclimatization programs for infants um, from age six months going forward. So ages five to 10, of course, the good work that's being done in our schools, schools are really a big portion of this. How ideally we would be able to have every child with some ability to swim before they left grammar school. Wouldn't that be cool? 
wouldn't that be cool? First, you have to teach them the dangers and the benefits of water, and then teach them how to swim. And certainly the second grade program, Swim for Life, is one of those aspects. Or many of us around the table have various programming that we work with, um, other non-for-profits that are building skills at this age. At this age, it is more likely that a parent is closely involved with their child as it comes to being around the water. When we move on into the middle school and high school years, though, that's not so much the case. And as we've sadly seen from the drownings that have happened just this year, most of these children are in middle school and high school, okay? And they're, tend, I think all of them were boys, right? And boys tend to be risk-seeking missiles, I'll put it out there, okay? Um, and so they need to really understand what that risk is that they're taking, and many of them don't. They're just playing, and they find themselves in situations that, that can take their lives. Also, at this point, we can be building more programming at the DOE to build out swimming skills specifically, to introduce children to competitive venues, competitive swim team and others, you know, there's 32 water-based sports. Did you know that? And if everybody could swim, imagine the opportunity to knock on all those doors and explore opportunities for socialization, right? As well as competition and expanding your social circles. We need junior lifeguard training. We need to build pipelines into the lifeguard um, capacity that we have here in New York City. And then also exposure to careers, aquatics careers. I'm going to name them. I have to look at my list here because there were so many I had, didn't realize myself. So, of course, we think about lifeguards and water safety instructors and camp um, counselors, et cetera, swim and other aquatic sport coaching, coaching positions, recreational dive instructors, commercial divers, underwater welders, marine mechanic rescue swimmers, Coast Guard Navy Marines. Those are my folks. Um, aquarium related work, aquaculture work, commercial fishing, hydrologists, oceanographers, marine biologists, naval architects, ships captain and crew, meteorologists, airlines crew, blue economy jobs, etc. And I think we need to change lifeguarding and make, make it a first responder role. And that may be how we start to get some cachet to bring more kids to want to become lifeguards, right? All right. 